Hello everyone. Welcome to Sunday School with Miss Pat. Good morning boys and girls. This is Miss Pat from New Beginning Baptist Church coming to you this morning with another message from uh, God's Holy Word. Uh, we'll begin in prayer this morning. Dear Jesus, we ask that you help us this morning to uh, give out the message, Lord, about Daniel, Lord, and, and that our children who are at home today can, can uh, learn about you, Father, and learn to make uh, wise choices in your service. Lord, we pray for them. We know they're home today. Uh, they're away from school and their friends. Lord, continue to bless them and be with them during this time. And may this uh, lesson be a, a blessing to them, Lord. In thy precious name I pray. Amen. Today we're going to talk about Daniel. We're going to talk about a new king that had come down to Babylon. You remember in our last uh, lesson we talked about a, an evil, proud King Belshazzar and how King Darius of the Medes and Persians came down and uh, they killed this evil, wicked king. And now he was Darius, King Darius was on the throne in Babylon. Now we know that uh, in according, we're going to be in chapter 6 of Daniel. We're going to be throughout this chapter. And we know that uh, Darius uh, set up 120 princes in this uh, province of Babylon. Uh, to serve under him, to, uh, to, to watch over his kingdom, to take uh, the accounts uh, of the kingdom, that he suffer no loss in the kingdom. And uh, he chose three presidents out of this group of, of uh, 120 that he had chosen. And he got to watching Daniel. And it says in verse 3 that, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm of his kingdom. In other words, he chose three presidents to be over all of this kingdom of his in Babylon. And out of all of these people and these three men, he chose Daniel because he... He, he had an excellent spirit in him. It says here he had an excellent spirit. And so the king wanted to set him over the entire province. Now we see on the board here, we see King Darius on the throne. We see Daniel and we see some of the rulers there and the princes there that was in the kingdom that were serving. And you know, uh, you got to remember something that... Uh, uh, King Darius had noticed that Daniel always did a, a, a better job than the other two presidents that he chose. He was loyal. He was faithful. He was a hard worker, and he was an honest worker. And the king liked Daniel very much. Now, how did Daniel get here to start with? Daniel did not belong in this kingdom. But we know that years ago that... Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar went down into the land of Israel and the land of Judah and he took captives of the young men that lived there. And you remember he took them back into the, the town, uh, the province of Babylon uh, to teach them the, the, the culture there, to teach them the language and the laws and the rules and uh, to serve under King Nebuchadnezzar. And you remember that uh, that time, Daniel was just a young teenager. You remember we talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, he, they were in this group of young men, too. We, we heard about them last week. Uh, but now, Daniel was, was an old man. Uh, he had been in Babylon many years longer than he had ever lived in his, his birth nation of Israel. And he, had, he was an old man now. He was old enough to be a grandfather. And he was still serving. He had served under King Nebuchadnezzar. He served under the wicked, proud uh, King Belshazzar. And now he was serving under King Darius of the Medes and Persians who came in and overtook Babylon. Now we know that uh, when 
King Darius uh, set up this honor. Uh, here's what it said uh, that Daniel was preferred. So King Darius set him up as a great honor. And it was a great honor to Daniel. But there was other people who did not like what King Darius had done, that, that he had set up. Daniel over all of them, they became jealous. They did not like this. Uh, when you become jealous children, um, it's a horrible thing. Uh, that means that you, you uh, want something that somebody else has. Uh, and it's a terrible thing to be jealous of, of anything and anybody. And we know that uh, these men grew jealous. They wanted to be second in command to the king himself. They certainly did not want this honor for Daniel. And they began to plot and to plan against Daniel. And they said, uh, maybe we could watch him and maybe we could discover something about him. Uh, maybe he'll, he'll slip up and he'll do something dishonest or are illegal. Maybe, maybe we can tell the king then. And so these men started to spy on Daniel. And each and every day that they watched Daniel, they watched him over and over. They, they found out that he was always truthful and honest. They were upset. They were infuriated that they could not find anything that to, to charge him with before the King Darius. And they said, hmm, this is not working at all. Uh, we can't catch Daniel doing anything wrong. What, what are we going to do? We can't just let him take this position of honor. We want it for ourselves. We don't want Daniel to have this position. And so in Daniel 6, 5, it says, then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Well, okay, what that means is, let's make a law that forces him to disobey his God. And the men thought, well, he's not going to disobey his God, so maybe that's how we can catch him. And let's write this law. Let's, let's write a law and... and Let's take it to the king and, and get him to sign it. And so they did. They began to write up the law, and, and they, their plan was to trick the king Darius into signing it into law because they knew that once the law is made, it would never be changed. And they knew that if David, or if Daniel, excuse me, broke the law, he would be in big trouble. Now, these wicked, scheming men were up to no good. And soon they had written the law. All they needed to do was get King Darius to sign this decree, and it would become law of the land. Now we know that these men drew up this decree. They wrote it down, and they went in to uh, King Darius, and, and they, uh, they talked to him, and they wanted him to establish uh, this law that said that no one could pray to anyone except King Darius himself for 30 days. Now, they wanted this king to sign that, and you know, he got to thinking. He said, well, he says, uh, hmm, that sounds pretty good. Uh, these men want to honor me. I, I like having people to to pray to me, and, and, and it, it would be an honor. So here these guys were coming with this decree for the king to sign, and, and King Darius didn't see nothing, no harm in it. They wanted to, to honor, so he didn't want to stop them in doing that. So King Darius signed this into law, and we knew that by the Medes and the Persians that once you signed a, a decree into law, it could not be changed. Now this law said that no one could pray to anyone except this king for 30 days. Remember that, children. Now, what do you think? What do you think that Daniel did when he heard this news? What do you think, children? Well, it says here that... Um, 
in verse 9 of chapter 6 in Daniel, it says, uh, in 9 it says, Wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. And then in verse 10 it said, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. And his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did before time. Now we knew that as soon as this happened, Daniel had already made many choices in his life and he had chose to obey God. He chose to obey God and honor God by prayer and worship on his knees, facing back to Jerusalem, his hometown, with his windows open. And he, and he prayed three times a day, every day like this, because he loved God. He knew God was a right, righteous God. He was not going to bow down to anyone else. He had never done that throughout his whole life, the whole time that he was in in uh, Babylon, he never worshipped any false idols. He worshipped only his God, the God of Israel. Now, we know that these men were plotting. And what these men did, they went and they stood out the outside of the window. And you know that. Daniel knelt down in prayer, and these men could hear him praying. And they said, ah, we caught him, we caught him. He's praying to his God. He's disobeying this decree that King Darius has signed. We've got him now, men. Let's go, let's go to the king. Let's tell him, let's tell him what Daniel is doing. So they went to the king, and in verse 612, it says, Here's what it says. I just jumped ahead of myself. And it says in verse 11 of Daniel chapter 6, Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And then in verse 12 it says, Then they came near and spake before the king this concerning the king's decree. And it said, O oh, king, have, have you not put out this decree that every man shall worship you, shall pray to you for 30 days? And if this decree was obeyed, that that person that found, was found guilty would be cast into a den of lions? And the king answered and he said, Yes, uh, yes, I did sign the, the decree, the, the thing is true. And according to the law of the Medes and Persians, it cannot be altered, it cannot be changed. And then they answered and they said to the king, But, but O king, uh, Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, he was up there praying. He's been praying three times a day to his God. Well... The king, when he heard the words spoken, he was not happy at all. He was angry with himself. He had allowed himself to be flattered and tricked by these evil, wicked men. And he was angry also at them for concocting this plan in the first place. What could be done about it? The law was the law. Even a king could not change the law once he signed the decree. Now we know that all day long King Darius was in thought. He, he was thinking about Daniel. He liked Daniel. Daniel had been faithful to him. He, he served him with honor and integrity. He was a loyal uh, servant of this king and he liked Daniel. He didn't want to punish that. He certainly didn't want him to be thrown into a den of lions, boys and girls. And so he paced the floor. He he scratched his head. He he walked around. He he was he was con so concerned. And these men kept saying, "But old king, you know the penalty for disobeying this law. 
is for the lawbreaker to be thrown into the lion's den. And the law can't be changed, O king. Finally, King Darius just threw his hands up in frustration. Okay, all right, the law can't be changed. I can't change it. Take Daniel, throw him into the lion's den, and I will meet you there. We know, boys and girls. Let me put this up for you. So the men took Daniel and they threw him into the lion's den. It was a dark and dreary place. And after they threw him in there, they placed a stone over it. King Darius sealed that stone with his ring, the seal of his ring. And then it says that King Darius left and he went back to his palace. And King Darius, he, he was so d distraught. Um, he was in anguish, boys and girls. He, he, he had told Daniel right before they threw him in the lion's den, he says, your God is more than able to deliver you from this. Your God will, will deliver you, Daniel. And this is what King Darius said to Daniel before they threw him in there. How interesting it was that King Darius was trusting in Daniel's God to help Daniel. And after he was thrown into this den of lions and he went back to his palace, the king did, and he was so distraught. And he, he couldn't sleep, boys and girls. He, he, he could not eat anything. He refused any food. Uh, he paced the floors. He would not let the musicians play anything to soothe him or to help him to sleep. He couldn't sleep. He, he was so torn up about this and what these wicked men had done by uh, flattering him and getting him to sign that decree. And so all night long the king paced and paced back and forth. And the, very early the next morning, the king woke up, the, the king got up from what he was doing. I don't know if he had napped at any at all. He may not have. The, the Bible doesn't sell. He just tell, it just says that he was so disturbed and restless he did not eat. And I'm sure he, he could not sleep. So the king got up and he, he ran immediately to the to where they had put Daniel into the lion's den. And the king got there and he moved the, the, the stone across the, the hole at the top of the, of the den itself. And, and the king said, Daniel, oh Daniel, was your God able to save you from the lions? And the king waited and he, he listened and had the worst happen to Daniel. He, the king was hoping and I, I think he was praying that the God of Daniel would deliver him and he called out to Daniel and then he heard then this is what he heard O king live forever called Daniel my God has sent his angel and shut the the lion's mouths they have not hurt me oh my goodness can you imagine the feeling of King Darius the the relief on his face the he was astonished. He was also overjoyed. He called for his guards to pull out Daniel out of this lion's den. Now, boys and girls, this is my personal opinion, but I believe these lions uh, were docile. I believe that, that God did shut their mouths, but I believe that he, he just calmed them down and, and they rested during the night. Uh, they did not cause any harm to Daniel. Uh, they might even come up and sniffed him, you know, but they were they they didn't cause any harm at all. And so when they pulled him out of uh, out of that den, the lion's den, uh, they could not find one mark upon him. They could not find anything. So they pulled him out. And King Darius ran up to Daniel. 
and he certainly he certainly looked him over. He he was he was so happy. He was so glad that Daniel's God did indeed deliver him from a den of lions. Now, Daniel was an old man now when he was thrown into the den of lions. He had learned over and over that he could trust God. He knew God loved him and cared for him. He knew that obeying God and His Word was always the right choice, and he trusted God with the rest. We know that, boys and girls, you may not be threatened with things like a den of lions, but we know that, that you will be tempted to do the things that are not right in God's sight. We know that Satan will tempt you to, to sin. And others might try to tell you that sin is okay, or maybe even fun. But remember that God's way is always best. God is holy and true. What He says is right and good. Standing up for what God says is always the best choice. We can trust God to give us the courage to honor and obey Him. I hope today, children, you have learned a very important lesson about Daniel and how Daniel was faithful and true to his God, the God of Israel. And we also learn about King Darius, how this, this king was really a king that still worshipped idols, and yet he acknowledged the king, uh, the, the God of Israel. And, and, and please, children, today, uh, you're making choices now. You're making choices about the friends you have. You're making choices about the clothes that you'd like to wear to school. You're making choices about how you want your hair to look and, and how uh, the friends that you pick out. And uh, children, let this lesson uh, come to you that, that we can make and you can make wise choices. You can make choices that, that God would approve of. And uh, so I'll close the lesson today uh, in prayer. Uh, thank you, dear Jesus, for the lesson we've learned today. Lord, may the children just apply it, take it to their hearts, Lord, and be with them at home now. We're still uh, staying at home uh, during this virus. It's still out there, Father. We pray that you be with those on the front lines, Lord. You be with the churches throughout the land. and and help them and, and those in their congregations who are worshiping from home, Father. And, and just be with our country and nations of the world, Lord. And, and uh, Father, just be with us during this time. In thy blessed name we pray. Amen. Thank you, children. Bye-bye. Well, hello, Dwayne. It's so good to see you today. I see you're still wearing your mask. I'm still wearing mine. I heard you coming, so I put my mask on. We still have to wear our mask, don't we, Dwayne? Yes, we do. Yes, we do have to wear them, boys and girls. When we still go out, we need to wear a mask. And, and it, it, it protects us, but it also protects other people in case we're sick. So, Dwayne, how are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. I'm still working. I know, I see your, your hard hat on. Uh, it's good to see you today. Uh, we were just getting ready, I was just getting ready to tell the boys and girls the, the uh, Bible verse today. Would you, would you like to see it and read it? Yes. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Psalm 9, 10. That's right, Dwayne. And you know what that's talking about? And they that know thy name? It's talking about God. It's talking about uh, what he is known for, what he is, his, his character. That's what he's known for. And, and think about it, boys and girls. When, when we know that, that God is faithful, he's powerful, he's true and right and good, and that will lead us to trust in him. 
And you know, in Psalm 18.30, it says God's way is perfect. And we know right here, the, the Bible verse says that, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. And right here it says, Has not forsaken them that seek thee. Dwayne, what, what do you think forsake means? It means to abandon or, or to, to leave alone or, or, or give up on. So we know that God will never leave those who seek Him and trust Him. He will never leave us or forsake us. Isn't that right, Dwayne? Yes, it is. Boys and girls, we hope you have learned something from the lesson today about Daniel and also from this Bible verse because we know that God loves us, that His way is perfect, that He will protect us through all things. Dwayne, it was good to see you today. I hope you have a great work day and, and stay safe out there, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, boys and girls. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for Sunday School with Miss Pat. We hope you enjoyed this week's lesson.